we are testified on the 10th of March and then on the 22nd the office of the uh, Alding Nial who is the Minister of Presidential Affairs so they responded to what they see as the accusations of Peter Biar. So Biar talked about his personal experiences that he was arrested without due course uh, when he was released he was followed to Nairobi and the National Security Agents attempted to abduct him and then during the testimony he talked about the state of democracy in Africa in the region in South Sudan uh, he talked about the mandate that was given to President Kiir to build institutions which he didn't and he also called on the US government uh, to sanction people like a Kolokor or people around the president who are intimidating dis dissidents. So he went on went on to talk about China and what China is doing in, in Africa undermining democratization. So I agree with most of the things he says except bringing in China when it comes to South Sudanese issues. You know, it's risky to bring in China because you sort of internationalize the problem focus on one thing I know the problem in China is an issue that is um, undermining democracy but this is not the firm to do it it's, it's different so it appears like you're trying to appease the US so this is this is really dangerous uh, the other thing is about calling for sanction what is ultimate goal of, of sanctions is it to intimidate the the administration or is it to just put pressure on them to sort of democratize and you know think about elections so I, I wasn't quite sure what was the ultimate goal of calling for you know sanctions so in the past I called for sanctions but it was in a different context there was a context in which I you know it was about pressure but in this in the testimony I didn't see that but all in all I like the testimony I like the way it was structured well presented within um, a the allocated time. I also like the the press release from the office of uh, Nial Deng Nial. Well, it's structured. It, it's it's like unlike other press releases from the ministries in South Sudan. This is well structured. There's some language that I don't agree with. There's some things I don't agree with, but I like the way it's presented. You know, it it's it sounded like a a discourse between two opinions which is what we want in South Sudan as opposed to intimidating people um, I, I know they try to you know, you know refute all the allegations and dismiss them but at least they did it you know the office did it in a, in a good way that we should encourage so but there's some things they they said for example they dismiss BR's allegations as baseless claims uh, that you know that that <laughs> that warranted you know response they also talked about BR was arrested because of what they call subversive activities which they did not specify what were they according to BR BR was just trying to help South Sudan you know become more liberal and more democratized where people can pass their opinions they can follow their own projects as long as they are not affecting anyone or infringing on the rights of other people but they have not specified what subversion BR was doing they have not specified they what what I did like is the way they tried to undermine BR's claim for asylum in the US that was below the standard of you know ministerial and office to sort of make fun of him when he was seeking asylum now there's something they also said that BR was arrested in in, in South Sudan by what they call competent courts and he was released so they're saying if the if the president wanted to kill BR he there's no point of releasing him and then you know follow him to Nairobi to abduct him and kill him so they say that doesn't make any sense he would have president would have killed him in prison if he wanted to but we know that killing BR in South Sudan would would, would really sound bad so we know people like uh, Dong and Idris what happened so it's easier to sort of do something like that in a foreign country to sort of you know say it wasn't us you know so 
So BR, I don't know whether BR was followed, but I think we, we can learn from history that this is a possibility or it has happened. So the other things that they talked about, about uh, the mandate that was given the president, there are some things I agree, given the nature of what happened in 2013, um, that it wasn't, it wasn't actually you know, possible to arrange elections you know, when people are at war. But there's some things they said which I think um, BR is correct and they're wrong in terms of the president is unelected. That is not something you can dispute. But what we can dispute are whether he's legitimate. These are two different things. That he wasn't elected, we all know he wasn't elected. But whether he is legitimate is what we can dispute. But for me, I can say, given the circumstances at the time, you know, the constitution that was signed on Independence Day in 2011 gave him the mandate to, to govern. So for me, he has some legitimacy, although he has abused it. But that he is undemocratic is not something he's undemocratic. He wasn't elected. So he might have legitimacy, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't um, elected. So they also talked about um, that... Uh, the claim that because BR said that Kiir and his administration are undermining democracy. So th this is what they said on page 12, on page 2. The claim that democracy in South Sudan is being stifled is, total, is totally without merit. So if newspapers are being printed with blank pages because the national security is, you know, you know, censoring newspapers, then why would you say that that's there's democracy in South Sudan. So democracy is being undermined because now you cannot criticize people like uh, Ango, uh, who is a musician. He's now, he was arrested because he criticized the government. We know this, this happened. So I think this is just political theatrics. Um, um, the other thing they, they talked about um, is about elections after independence. They say that it, it is fanciful to, dis, to think that the SPLM should have dispensed with the need for an interim period and proceed to organize elections immediately upon the proclamation of independence. Now, South Sudan has been, you know, was for six years autonomous. So it wasn't the, the fact that we didn't know, we knew South Sudan was going to be independent. So. If South Sudan became independent in 2011, they could have, you know, organized for elections to be held in 2012. That was a possibility because we had six years to organize ourselves. So it wasn't something that was out of blue. And also, um, that would have actually helped the president. So the idea that it was fanciful, it wasn't not because there was no war by 2011. So it was possible for uh, the render of 2011 and 2012, the whole of 2012, to organize elections. So it wasn't, it wasn't fanciful. There's something they also talked about, <laughs> that um, South Sudanese were the ones who, who voted in 2010 in Sudan as Southern Sudanese. So they say it makes no difference if elections were held in South Sudan, it would be the same people who would vote for him. So this is what they say. The constitutional and political context in which they vote, they vote is immaterial for as long as the voters remain the same people. So, but we're talking about two different countries. So these people voted as Sudanese, but now we want them to vote as, Southern, as South Sudanese. But they say it doesn't, <laughs> the constitutional and political context is immaterial, seriously? So people from a different country can come and, just because they're same people, the political context, the constitutional context was different. So you cannot dismiss it. To dismiss it is a problem. It's, it's a big problem to say it, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter because the same people, you know, they're the same people, but they were two different citizens. And they were under different constitutions. So dismissing things like this is why the constitution is undermined in South Sudan. But all in all, I like the letter. Uh, in the way it was structured. They even admitted the role played by humanitarian agencies, which is good. They're helping South Sudanese. They acknowledged that that was good. They also talked about what they're doing in terms of uh, what South Sudanese are doing in terms of 
the peace. There are some things they, they say that are just to prop up the government, but at least they are not just saying, you know, dismissing everything they are saying without talking about things that are positive. That's what I like and that's what I would want to see. Um, but just to end is just something that uh, Kuala Manyang said in, in Bor when uh, the president went with him. He talked about uh, activists, that there's nothing good about activism, but please, <laughs> Mr. Kual, we cannot build a country where we all think alike. What moves a country forward is when we tell you what is wrong with you, and then you can tell us what you are saying is not true, and then tell me why it's not true. Because the idea that we cannot criticize, the idea that you want us to always praise you is dangerous. <laughs> We just don't think. And then we wake up in the morning and say, okay, we want to criticize. No. We see these things happening. So activism, I think what you were talking about was about BR. But BR was not dreaming these things. And then he talked about them. So, just look at what we say president you spoke up the way you're feeling is the way we feel le fridge le drink and a call of le and call back and yandet australia ba chol ba ban ko bla out kind of my friends and then go to away with so but now me to junub sudan chinum that ability so ki wo jamana che ka da che kan mi ko economy 30 we you don't see it because we quite don't know where ka and we know exactly to peer ko did it because we see so what you can got when you ya ko cho jam so she was writing on Twitter and asking some old ladies who were at the rally in, in board. And you know what this old lady said? That's what, that's what this old lady said. That the president came and called me. This is not an educated woman. It's, it was just nothing. So as long as we respect you. So even if I say something against you, it's not because I hate you, it's just because I want you to fix things. Nanong kachawo, nanong kachawo, watch, kaba fix.